Welcome back to Next Year Investing. A little earnings preview, show favorite and beyond me. I don't know why it's a show favorite, but I feel like it is. And ironically, I literally had this for lunch today. Uh, it was one of my choices in the office, and, you know, I went with it. And did you like it? I, it was, I don't mind it. I think it's okay. It's okay. It has a very, like, distinct taste, but I guess, yeah, if that's... It's probably a show favorite because of me. I think I will take some some fall for that, although it hasn't necessarily... I mean, this year it's actually seen some outperformance, but... It has seen some some volatility. It's trading basically at completely new levels than what we once saw during the pandemic when things were on an absolute tear in this name. But here to tell us more on what we can expect from their quarterly earnings, I'd like to welcome in Caroline Wood, Senior Markets Correspondent for the Network. So, Caroline, walk us through what we can expect here because this name has been, again, it's it's found its new valuation level, I will say. It's been reset. But so it's been somewhat of a disappointment to watch, I'll say. <laughs> Hey there, Jenny. First of all, I have to say plot twist. Alex is eating beyond meat. I always associate it with you. So that was a surprise to me to hear that that's on Alex's lunch menu. But yes, we've seen some weakness today heading into this report after the bell. Shares are off about 6 percent right now. They're down about 15 percent in August alone. That being said, it's well, I should note, back in May, the company actually beat on both the top and bottom line and still saw uh, its shares sink despite the beat. And since then, it's seen a pretty nice run-up. It's actually up about 20% year-to-date, but down about 70% from those 52-week highs. So it has a lot of ground to gain. In terms of what analysts are expecting from this report, a loss of $0.81 cents per share. That's actually narrower than the year ago's $1.53 cent per share loss. So an improvement in terms of uh, the loss there on revenue of $111.28 million. That would be a decline from $147 million in the year ago period. Should also give us some insight into consumer spending habits. It's typically, of course, more expensive than regular meat. So it'll be interesting to see if consumers are continuing to trade down. And, and it's also interesting because we heard from Tyson that be- beef and pork sales volumes both fell last quarter. So if they're not necessarily eating Beyond Meat or beef and pork, it makes you wonder what people are actually eating. And we'll also get a progress report on reaching cash flow positive operations. We know Beyond Meat has been on a mission to become cash flow positive and achieve achieve sustainable long-term growth. So the timeline for that, they previously said the second half of the year. Let's see if they give any update to the guidance there. In terms of guidance for revenue outlook, they previously said full year revenue should come in the range of 375 to 415 million dollars. So we'll be looking for any updates to those figures as well. And then just in terms of new products as well, they've recently rolled out some new options, including the Beyond Stack Burger, Beyond Sausage, and there's increased availability of beyond steak. So we'll see if they have anything else in the pipeline and some initial. Uh, potentially some initial uh, progress report on how they're seeing in terms of uh, the, the availability and also the demand for those new products. You know, I feel like i got to defend myself here a little bit. I like Beyond Meat. I'm going to preface it with that. I, I would eat it, but my other choice was a turkey burger, and I'm comfortable with the choice that I made. So wasn't choosing between regular beef and Beyond Meat. I was choosing between turkey and Beyond Meat, and that's... I think an easier choice. But Caroline, talk to me about the analysts on this name. I I don't see any buys. Is that uh, what you're seeing as well? Not a lot of optimism here. All right. Alex likes Beyond Meat, hates turkey. Noted. All right. Uh, No, in terms of the analyst community, despite the fact that, as Jenny made reference to, and, you know, I had mentioned it's almost 70 percent off of 52-week highs, not a single analyst on the street has a buy rating on this name. The majority are in the hold camp. There are 10 hold ratings, six sells. The median price target for Beyond Meat is $12 per share. That's actually below where it's currently trading. If you take a look, it's currently trading at around $14.85. So analysts either need to play catch up or Beyond Meat. Uh, They're not very confident in Beyond Meat. I will say after the Q1 results, UBS did say that it was a step in the right direction, but they basically were concerned about the company's ability to improve their sales trajectory uh, given the macro environment, especially if the economic environment continues to deteriorate. So we'll see what they have to say in terms of just the overall economic outlook as well. But no, not a stock that uh, companies or that analysts have a buy rating on at all here. Right. And Caroline, the problem is, is like you said, the price parity, because right now everything is so expensive at the grocery store. It's like, why would you ever 
send more for Beyond Meat if you're not eating vegan or vegetarian. It's just, it's frankly gotten too expensive and I can completely understand that. It's not even something I regularly buy because it's like $10 for such a small portion. I'm like, I, ca I can't even handle the grocery store prices right now. So I very much get it. And I will continue to back Beyond Meat because I think that the vegan vegetarian space gets a lot of hate. So I will be the advocate. Although I guess Alex is an ally today, but we will leave it there. Appreciate the thoughts, Caroline Woods, Senior Markets Correspondent for the network.